Hi, this is Josh from Grappazilla, and today we're going to talk about wrestling's pressure and the wrestling pocket for BJJ. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And if you see me doing ticks, it's because I have Tourette syndrome and I really can't help it. Okay. Now, onto wrestling's uh, pressure on the wrestling pocket for BJJ. On a global scale, there are hundreds of grappling and wrestling styles practiced around the world. Some are popular styles like BJJ, Judo, Sambo, Freestyle Wrestling, Catch Wrestling, etc. And some are not, are not as popular, such as regional, cultural styles such as uh, Romanian Tranta, Moldovan Tranta, Chidaoba, Mongolian Boch, Turkish Oil Wrestling, uh, Korean Serum, everything. Now each style has attributes that depend on the rules of the style. Some styles have specific grips, some styles have specific points a lot of certain techniques, and some styles have certain band positions, etc. Now, each of these rules will develop an attribute for that grappling style, right? Um, and these attributes can add uh, a new dynamic to grappling athletes' uh, skills when they're cross-trained, you know? And by adding these uh, grappling styles into your game, uh, you'll not only get technical uh, advantages, you're going to get uh, physical and stylistic attributes that can add on top of, for example, your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, in recent years, as we've seen, as according to last Abu Dhabi for sure, uh, the one grappling style that's been really beneficial to add to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and that many Jiu-Jitsu schools are adding is wrestling, be it a freestyle, it could be Greco-Roman wrestling or folk style wrestling. Now, the reason for such a successful marriage of wrestling and BJJ is often misunderstood, as many people think it's just to learn takedowns, you know, but those who truly understand uh, wrestling and truly add wrestling to the BJJ are gaining an immense uh, advantage as they're not only uh, adding wrestling techniques, but the physical and tactical attributes of wrestling as well, Okay. And these attributes, as we said, are the wrestling pressure and uh, the use of the wrestling pocket, which I'm going to explain right now. What is wrestling pressure? Okay, now wrestling pressure can simply be explained to the non-wrestler as using distance, using movement, using contact, proper limb placement, distraction, uh, scrambling for position, proper rate weight distribution and uh, controlling hip level and all of these are used together when in contact with an opponent okay that's wrestling pressure and this wrestling pressure is far by far the most overlooked uh, uh, positive aspect of uh, adding wrestling to brazilian jiu-jitsu but it's the absolute most important aspect of adding wrestling to brazilian jiu-jitsu as well now it can be said that wrestling pressure uh, was heavily influenced by two specific rules within rest, the sport of wrestling itself. Now, the first rule is the passivity rule or passivity call, uh, which is where wrestlers are punished for being passive in a match. Now, this passivity rule kind of it really paves the way for action within a match. And... Um, in BJJ, it's very common to see two uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competitors uh, standing in, uh, in front of each other at the beginning of combat, like the average BJJ uh, practitioner. And they're almost afraid to confront right each other, afraid to go for the takedown. Now, for sure, a lot of it has to do with BJJ's rules. And the, perf the person can be uh, submitted or jump guard should they make a mistake. And I get that. But once again, we're seeing wrestling and those jujiteros jiu using wrestling dominating. So we're going to stick with that. Okay. Now, the second rule that, um, that we need to talk about is the push out rule in wrestling. Where if I push an opponent out from the fight area or the ring or the, the circle of wrestling, uh, I'll get awarded a point. Uh, or if I was charged with passivity, within 30 seconds, I'll be um, um, the passivity call be cancelled okay and then sometimes in the rules they'll be given a, a point as well in wrestling the rules change <laughs> not daily but all the time so it's always you need to it's very common for us to say what, what are the rules now what's this new rule so okay now when for example if we look at MMA 
for example, we see wrestlers constantly controlling where the fight goes. And a lot of this has to do with those two rules that I just spoke about within wrestling, because they build the attribute of uh, pressure, <clears throat> knowing how to use pressure all the time on the opponent at all times. Okay, just to give you an example. Now, actually wrestling pressure um, can even be explained more thoroughly as we see it within clinch fighting, as the constant pulling and pushing motions, moving to the side, changing angles, changing strong effective grips, uh, snapping the head down while moving uh, in changing directions for attack, etc. Uh, we see it a lot in the chest to chest position in the over under. Uh, we see it in hip contact and weight distribution in the arm drag, that's a big one. Uh, we see it in head pressure on the duck under to the, when you're taking the back, you know, that's pressure. And uh, we see it in the constant attack uh, and wrestlers basically not being afraid uh, to make them, I won't say mistake, but knowing that if they make a stake, they have chain wrestling and, and the scramble in order to get out of a bad position, okay? Uh, and that's basically what, what is wrestling pressure in my opinion. Now, what is the wrestling pocket? Now, the wrestling pocket is a very interesting term, okay? It's similar to like a boxer's pocket or a judoka's pocket or the pocket that we always hear of uh, in the UFC when Joe Rogan says he's in the pocket, you see? So a wrestler also has a pocket, but what is the wrestler's pocket? Uh, the wrestling pocket is absolutely related to pressure, wrestling pressure, but with a constant understanding of your body placement and weight distribution in contrast to body contact in with your opponent, okay? Now, it sounds confusing, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so, well, it really isn't confusing once you understand wrestling pressure, okay? So, to understand the wrestling pocket, a, a good example, let's talk about the arm drag, okay? Because a lot of jujiterios know the arm drag. It's a very common, very effective way of getting uh, a takedown, etc. Now, let's take a no-gi uh, BJJ practitioner. Generally, they have wonderful setup and execution of the arm drag until a certain point where uh, they would try to grab the opponent's far hip and catch the back and standing up, okay? This isn't to say that they're not successful in doing it, because they are. But the difference is... If you look at a wrestler doing uh, an arm drag, uh, they're going to always use that wrestler's pocket properly. Um, and generally, their hip position is always going to be, in comparison to a jiu-jitsu, jiu -jitsu, it's going to be always in a perfect position. And they're always going to be making the opponent carry their weight. Okay? And that's a huge difference. And you see it when... Uh, Jujiteros, like BJJ practitioners, uh, have a wrestler come to their club and say, man, you know, wrestling this guy, he's so strong. It's very hard. I get so tired. A lot of it, of course, wrestlers are strong, but a lot of it isn't the fact that wrestlers are so strong. It's the fact that he's using pressure all the time. And for example, on, on that arm drag we just spoke about, he's not just going to the arm drag to go to a single or back. He's making sure you're always feeling his weight. You're always feeling the pressure of him. There's no, no easy breaks, you know? So that's a very um, good example of it, you know. Uh, another proper example, you know, if you watch any Greco-Roman wrestling or freestyle wrestling arm drag in competition, you're always going to see like proper hip height, uh, height and placement. And uh, it's always guaranteeing this weight distribution. And this creates a lot of uh, wrestling pressure that we're talking about. Now, basically the wrestling pocket is when you have all the elements of a technique proper distance, weight distribution, wrestling pressure, timing, and hip placement. And these are in your favor together to maximize the uh, technique's effectiveness. That's the wrestling uh, pocket. Now, does this mean that all BJJ competitors perform poor arm drags? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, you have some world-class arm drags done by BJJ uh, guys, such as uh, Marcelo Garcia. I mean, awesome arm drag. Uh, Marcus Buchecha, Almeida, uh, Cyborg, Roberto Bro, and uh, Gary Tonin. They're all using arm drags at a, even that of like a, I would say like an international level wrestler. Good timing, they're always using pressure, etc. They're fast and they get to their goal fast. And this has to be stated as, as like, I'm not trying to downplay Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or uh, the takedowns of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm trying to 
uh, let you know and emphasize the development of wrestling pressure and understanding the wrestler's pocket in order to skyrocket grapplers wrestling's uh, wrestling uh, abilities and thus overall uh, BJJ guys uh, or, or girls overall grappling game okay now how to train wrestling pressure it's a simple question with a simple response you need to wrestle under the real set of wrestling uh, to develop those attributes okay not exactly what we wanted to hear i'm sure but uh, there's some uh there's some logic to that now it's not to say that uh you need to only train under wrestling rule set because you still have your primary purpose for learning wrestling it's not to wrestle it's to improve your bjj game most likely your no gi game although gi will help as well um you may be a bjj athlete getting ready for a local uh grappling tournament and need to develop aggressiveness and takedowns uh, and you might be a great guard player with great guard submissions. Uh, and of course, you want to develop your ability with wrestling uh, to uh, to get used to people of wrestling, right? But wrestling, in this case, will always be your secondary ability. And your primary your primary ability will be your jiu-jitsu. And there's no, I'm not here to say, like, uh, wrestling is the all-knowing art that you have that will defeat anyone. I'm saying if you add it to your jiu-jitsu and you add it properly, the keywords properly, it's going to pay off. Now, uh, in the case of wrestling's rule set, uh, when training wrestling, it'll develop um, a lot of attributes that are still great to have. You should train with passivity calls, push outs, scrambling uh, for top position and fighting off the pin. Yes, fighting off the pin. And these are all going to develop your wrestling aggression, ability to scramble, your non-stop attacking, not being afraid to attack, you know, that we see uh, a lot of the jiu-jiteros who are winning um, major grappling competitions like uh, IBJJF, EBI, ADCC, Naga, they all have those type of attributes at the top levels. And if you want to develop them, wrestling will definitely help you develop those. The trick is to keep focused on the rule set you're training uh, when you're talking about um, wrestling attribution development without developing bad habits, of course, um, because wrestling can develop bad habits. So you got you have to know how to do it properly. And you're asking if it can be done? Of course it can. You know, it's uh, a lot of people say it can't be done, etc. but it is. I mean, take uh, 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 take Buchecha, for example. He won the Abu Dhabi's multiple time IBJJF champion, perhaps the best grappler of all time. Arguably, you could say other people, Roger, Gordon, etc. you name it. But Buchecha's in the, in the argument there, right? But Checha has been training wrestling for many years, and he shows it in his aggressiveness of uh, takedown game, his outstanding uh, scrambling ability. He always has this constant wrestling pressure. I'm not saying it's not from jiu-jitsu, but wrestling is definitely adding on that. And he's always, he uses the, the wrestling pocket proper as well. Uh, the pocket mixed with his aggress aggressiveness and pressure, he is a force to reckon with in matches, and you see it. But the most... Uh, impressive element of Buchecha uh, has truly be, is truly the fact that he's become a great wrestler without carrying, with no uh, carryover of bad habits that could impact his uh, jiu-jitsu and sub uh, sub uh, submission wrestling game. So he did it properly, you know? And uh, in the current, like especially after the, the 2022 Abu Dhabi, um, we're starting to see um, a lot of BJJ schools adding wrestling. And uh, simply, and those who are adding wrestling and doing it properly, are uh, are dominating for the most part, you know. And uh, we saw it once again. You saw it during this Abu Dhabi. It was it was phenomenal. And you see the John Donner here. He's training wrestling, and a lot of these guys uh, are doing it. Okay. Now, in conclusion, wrestling pressure and uh, the use of the wrestling pocket are for sure the most underlooked and most important factor when you're talking about adding wrestling into your BJJ and grappling game. It's not easy to develop, okay? No one's saying it's easy, and it does take time. But once you understand wrestling pressure and the use of the wrestling pocket, your grappling and your BJJ abilities are only going to get much better, and you're going to become more dangerous. And should you ever go to MMA, it only is going to help you as well. There's no doubt. And we see this in many um, top IBJJF, IDCC, 
and MMA athletes as they're dedicating a large part of their uh, training to wrestling and they're properly winning. Now, at the end of the day, uh, grappling styles are, are all just a type of wrestling, okay? We all love to say names and there's this marketing. Is it Gracie Jiu-Jitsu? No, it's uh, Gracie Baja Jiu-Jitsu. No, it's 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, it's Kodokan Judo. Yes, and but they're all rule sets or, or uh, philosophies and how they get it. But in a way, it's a wrestling. Like you, you grab and you you try to uh, manipulate the opponent into a position, right? So it's a type of wrestling. And all each type of these wrestlings, because of their philosophies and their uh, rule set, all develop uh, different attributes. And they might be very small differences in attributes, but they do. Now. There is no doubt that of all these styles currently, uh, wrestling, and when speaking of wrestling, specifically the Olympic wrestling styles as uh, freestyle and uh, Greco-Roman, as well as collegiate folk style wrestling, which is common in the United States. We see that the, they're very specific attributes that only not only make a difference um, in a gra grappling athlete's ability, but also in their confidence when they're properly added. That's the last thing we should talk about. All this is going to get you confident, you know, in the scramble, when you're standing up, defending the takedown, attacking, you know, and scoring those points that you need or getting into the position you need to attack. Now, hopefully you add wrestling to your BJJ properly, the keywords properly, and let's get the attributes um, that add another dimension to your BJJ game. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And if you, once again, if you see me ticking, I got really bad threats and uh, I can't help it. So uh, until then... Add wrestling, train jiu-jitsu, and just train. Have a good day.